Okay. All right, and we're live. Okay, so um, I'm so excited to be here with Stephanie Ward of Firefly Coaching. This is Allison with Daily Outfit, and I am launching Vision 2020, where I'm inviting you behind the curtain for my conversations with nine of some of my favorite female entrepreneurs. That's you, Stephanie. Aww, I feel the same way about you. Yay! Yay! So I'm going to be um, asking you about your vision for women in 2020, how your work aligns with that vision, and what you do to stay motivated. Plus, we'll talk about what you give away and what you've going, what you've got going on. So. Um, I'm so excited to be sitting down with you today. Thanks so much for joining me and being my first interview of the summit. I'm happy to be here. You've got Yay. a great, great thing going on. Yeah. So before we get into the vision stuff, um, could you fill our viewers and listeners in on who you are, uh, your journey into entrepreneurship, how you got here, and what prompted you to start your business? Okay. You know, just yeah. a small question. The small, yeah, I was going to say, where should I be? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll make it as compact as possible. I uh, started, I did a lot of things before I started my own business, including working at a nonprofit, working at a for-profit. And then I hit this sort of, I don't know, midlife crisis of this work I'm doing is not meaningful. I want to do meaningful work. And so I couldn't figure out what that was. And I heard about this new thing called coaching. Mm. Back, back in the day okay I've had my business yep. 18 years so. <laughs> um, and so I found out about coaching I thought well if I can't figure it out on my own I'll hire a coach and try to figure it out and I worked with a coach and thought hey this is really cool this is something for me and so I started my own coaching business in 2002 mm. and helping small business owners mostly service-based business owners be more visible and get more clients and finding a way to do marketing that's not creepy and that fits for them. That's a nutshell. I like it. You did that very well, actually. Um, I, you know, and I love that you lead with that, this whole idea of doing marketing that's not creepy. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but it also just really hits the nail on the head. And, um, and I think so many people are so scared of marketing themselves because it feels creepy. Mm -hmm. And not everyone is an extroverted human like you and I. Mm -hmm. um, so it feels a bit scary too. So I'm curious, uh, what helped you figure out this particular niche, mm -hmm. the small business owner? Um, was that from your background or was that just the people that you like to hang with? Like, how did you? Well, when I first started off in 2002, I actually had three target market groups. They were somewhat related. So it was the small business owners, it was career changers and uh, leadership, people, mm. in corporate, leaders in corporate. And I only did that for three years before I realized you've got to focus and choose a niche. And that's when I, out of the three, I love the business owners the most because they're varied and it's so exciting. And it's what I was doing as well. So I think yeah. it was just the, the whole idea of, um, the small business and taking control of your life and going for your dreams and being able to have the freedom and then being able to support that with the work I do, because most of the people just want to do the work they love and they don't, don't want to do marketing. They're not a weirdo like me that loves marketing. <laughs> um, I help them find a way where they can do it and it doesn't feel creepy and it feels good so that they can actually do the work they love to do. Yeah. That's so interesting because that's part of the way I talk about the work I do too. Yeah. That, you know, not everyone loves to get dressed in the morning. Not yes, everyone you do, loves exactly. <laughs> to put together an outfit, you know, and I try to make it easy so that women can go out and do the work they were put on this planet to do. And, you know, I don't think I necessarily made that connection before that you and I both are sort of in this service business to help other people do their work. Yeah. Fascinating. There's so many angles to it. It, it, it wow. They all matter and supporting each other so that we can do this and we can take control of our destiny and our finances and, you know, be able to put our creative work out in the world as well. It's just, it's a, it's an exciting vision. It is. Hey, like hey. vision 2020. Like, 
Wait a minute. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that brings me to my first big question. <laughs> now that our watchers and viewers and listeners know who you are and how you got here. So um, first, let me say just a caveat. When I'm talking about women, obviously, I realize women are not all the same. We're not a monolith. You know, you and I are not the same person, even though we're women. Um, our experience doesn't speak for all women, you know, with there are many different types of women on the planet. But of course, the way I think about it, and, and you can tell me how you think about it, but when I think about women, and, and especially for female entrepreneurs, we do face systemic issues, and we do face sort of overarching um, stereotypes about women and, you know, regardless of where we come from or what we look like, there are still certain things that get in our way. Would, would you agree with that? Would you say that's For sure? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so when I talk about, you know, a vision for women, I'm talking about it sort of from that perspective, like, you know, regardless of where you're coming from and of course you may have more issues or there may be more things standing in your way that we all of us kind of have to jump a certain number of hoops true i agree i agree i mean there there you have to if you're going to talk in generalizations you kind of have to make some of them so of mm -hmm. course there's exceptions to every rule but we all know that um when there's a promotion or a job men say oh i tick off two of ten boxes I'll get it. And women go, oh, I took off only eight out of 10. I, I shouldn't apply. Uh, maybe I should go get a PhD in those other two. <laughs> let me, yeah, let me get another PhD first. So we right. are overqualified. We're ready. So that's one of my biggest messages. Don't wait. You are ready enough. You are prepared yeah. enough. You know enough. And you learn by doing. So that's part of my soapbox. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm totally with you on that. In, in fact, it's interesting. It just occurred to me, my mom had um, two masters and a PhD. Wow. And when we, yeah. And when we came back to the United States, she applied for a teaching job uh, and they told her she was overqualified. Okay. <laughs> it's like, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Can't win for losing. The catch. Yeah, right. So, so in actual fact, you could be penalized mm. for doing all of that training and getting so prepared and getting to that point in your life where you're like, I'm ready now. And the world's like, mm, you're kind of too ready for us. Or she just has to take over the whole school or start her own school. But no, I totally get your point. Right. It's, uh, so yeah. you know what she did, Stephanie? What? She completely changed careers and ended up starting her own business as a tax consultant. She had a PhD in British history and she became a tax consultant okay. at 60 and ran a very successful business and then sold it later when my parents were ready to retire. So, you know, you can, I, I always take that lesson. Like you can always just go ahead and do something, yes. you know, but don't wait uh, because, you know, you might wait too long. So um, talking about vision for women in 2020, and I know you don't only work with women, but, um, but I do know that you love working with women um, because you worked with me. Um, so talk to me about what that means to you and kind of what you're thinking uh, for the women in, in your, you know, coterie. Well, I do work mainly with women. I have worked mm -hmm. with men are welcome and I've had men clients, but the majority of my clients are women. And I just, I'm at the point now with everything that's going on in the world, again, like I started, you know, don't wait. If you have an idea, if you have a vision, if you have a goal, whatever it is you want to do, if you haven't started your business and you want to start, or you've started and you want to go to the next level or the next step, do it. Like there's nothing yeah. to stop you. And this key on taking action and really it's sometimes the only way you can find out what the next step is. Like you can't yes. figure it all out before you start. You have that to go so and then you see, and then you go and then you see some more and you'll find support along the way and you can, you can get there, but don't wait anymore. And don't, yeah. and among the waiting part, a lot of the reason people wait is because they're thinking about, Oh, what will people think of me? What if I fail all these, what if, what if, what yes. if. So it's, it's about just, 
really being centered and finding your own value within yourself and not looking mm -hmm. for external validation and confirmation from other people. Because oh, that's so hard at, though. That's so hard. It is hard. It's, it, I, I really look at it as a practice, just like a skill mm. building a muscle. And I've, you've heard me talk about The Four Agreements by Miguel Ruiz. It's a book. Check it out. Um, and one of the agreements is don't take anything personally. Mm. And that means good or bad. So right. if you love me, that's about you. And if you hate me, that's about you. And once you can get that, it's like, okay. So then you don't, the praise also rolls off your back. Mm. just as much as the criticism does because your value and worth and contribution comes from inside of you it's internal mm. knowing what you have to offer and so then those voices outside of you don't bother you as much mm. Woo! <laughs> Woo! we just went real deep <laughs> um i like that I like that a lot. And it's so interesting to me because when I think about when people give me praise, um, you know, between you and me and everyone else who's listening, um, honestly, when people tell me, you know, how much they've enjoyed working with me or whatever, I love hearing it. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, I know it's true. That's what you I'm know, talking. so I'm not surprised mm -hmm. because I've seen all along the way them having these aha moments or discovering things, or I can see their, you know, arc throughout the program from where they started to where they are. And they've been reflecting, you know, the entire journey. And I'm sure that's true for you with your clients at, you know, at the end of your engagement, you know, they're so much better off than when they started, right? So when, when they reflect that back to you, it's like, yeah, you are. <laughs> like, yeah, that's true. Well, I, I'm, exactly. I mean, it's, it's a knowing of listening to your clients, listening to what they say, um, taking in the feedback. I mean, we can always, always learn, improve, and grow. And of that's, course. The, that's, the, that's the idea. It's just not to hang everything on this external piece, mm. which, and I think social media also contributes to that and is making a lot of people have a lot of anxiety and yes. feeling pressure and stress. And it just doesn't have to be that way. So it's, mm -hmm. and again, to, to, another piece of that is what Brene Brown talks about with the man in the arena. Don't listen to anyone who's not in the arena, you know, yeah. only listen to a few people that you trust that are also in the arena that you value their opinion. You don't have to listen, you know, everyone's got an opinion. So, yep. um, it doesn't have to be something that you absorb and take personally. Well, and you know, that's why I'm doing this over the next three days because I got the advice early on when I was starting my business to, you know, gather a council, uh, to have a group of people that I really trust and care about their opinion and to continually check in with them. And I call them my balcony and you're definitely one of them. And thank you for being that for me. But, you know, to, to have a safe space where you can ask questions and the things you really are wondering about and get vulnerable and get really good feedback from someone you trust is invaluable. And it's something I think women do so well. It's something we really have been socialized to do and it works. Right. So let's capitalize on that. Let's make the best of all the things we're really good at naturally anyway. Mm -hmm. And that will help us uh, pump up our skills in the areas that maybe we need to lift a bit. So yeah, yeah I'm yeah. all for that. Bring people around you, create a mastermind, join a mastermind, mm -hmm. bring people in, have conversations and um, share experiences with each other. Yeah. It's something you were saying earlier about how uh, you really believe in the human element of marketing. And, and I love that about you. It, because when you're talking about the human element, it's also, uh, there's a vulnerability there to, and, and a being real, right? Mm -hmm. So would you say that your vision for women in 2020 is just to get to it, get into the game, be vulnerable, show up as who you are. Am I putting words in your mouth or would you say that's, that's on it? No, for sure. I mean, you've got to show up and you've got to be willing to be visible for the person you are. And, um, 
Don't try to be anything or do anything that someone else tells you. Be yourself Mm -hmm. and be a human. And however that comes up for you, if you're introvert, if you're shy, if you have a, you know, dry sense of humor, if you're extrovert, whatever it is, be that and then just make connections with human. I I Mm -hmm. often say just replace the word marketing with connecting. Mm. Look at it like that just forget about yeah. the word marketing and just say okay how am i going to connect with people today how am i going to connect with someone so online connection in person connecting and connecting is about listening mm. and about being helpful and about being empathetic and that's that sounds like fun to me right. so then it's completely doable and it's much more um it's easier to just do it because you're much more relaxed and mm you switch the attention away from yourself to the other person, focused on them being interested in them instead of working on being interesting and just being a helpful human. And then mm-hmm. connection happens. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I, I It leads me to my next question, actually, very nicely, uh, which is how your work serves that vision. And, you know, just to bring it back full circle, when you're talking about marketing, And I know this is true about you. You're always talking about how to get into connection with people. Mm. So do do you want to say a little bit more about that, like more specifically about marketing? Um, Well, I think, and your question is specifically about the the connection between the vision and women or? Mm -hmm. How your vision for women connects with the work that you do. And you kind of answered it already, but I just want to give you an opportunity to expand on it if there's anything else you want to say about that. I think it it gives me the chance to encourage women to do what they already know they want to do Mm. and and reassure them and give them confirmation and support in how to convey that message in a way that they feel proud of and that connects with the people that they need to connect with because I, there really are no, there are no tricks and there are no, well, some people, I guess there are tricks. I don't know what they are. I don't learn them. I don't teach them. Um, so I don't know what they are, but some, some maybe creepy bro marketing does that. (laughs) (laughs) For the most part, it's just a matter of, um, being yourself and being clear about the value you bring. And so I help them when I can help them do that, then yeah. they can go to people that could use their services and in a really relaxed way, let people know, Oh, well, Hey, that's interesting. You're saying that. Cause that's actually what I do. And I help women or men do this and that. So that it's just completely natural and mm-hmm. it's, um, uh, natural evolution from conversations. So that's how I see my part in this process is to facilitate them being more confident and clear in the way they communicate their value. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting because when I first met you, I went and looked on your, oh, is my thing wiggling again? (laughs) Whoa. My my screen sometimes wiggles uh, when I get really excited. Um, When I I went and looked at your website and I noticed, so you have this, downloadable, you know, I think it's seven strategies to attract more clients. And I remember thinking at the time, like, whoa, she's giving away everything. (laughs) And, you know, that was when I first started out and I had that. And it's, I think this is, this will be very um, resonant for anyone who's watching or listening, who's just starting out in their business, that fear of like giving it all away. And I, I wonder if you wouldn't mind just talking a little bit more about that idea of generosity um, in marketing and how it, it's you're not actually giving it all away at all. No. Yeah. Generosity is such an important word. That's part of being helpful and making a connection. And you, you can be very generous with your knowledge, whatever your business is, share it with people and not be giving it all away because at the end of the day it's people there will always be people that need your help in implementing that information yes and what it does for you it allows you to be helpful it allows you to show people how you can be helpful and show your expertise or your worth so it helps you actually a lot um Mm -hmm. and the more helpful you can be the better of course there is a line between free and paid. You can't give everything away. So you do need to be very clear about when you're approaching that line, um, that you are clear where, when you have reset line and that comes 
across a lot of times in conversations, people will say, can I pick your brain? Or should we have coffee? This or that. Mm -hmm. And, or they write you with a question with a problem. And I kind of just use like a 15 minute rule. If I could answer or help in 15 minutes, send a link, tell them a resource, fine. Otherwise I say, you know what? This is actually the kind of stuff people hire me for. And here's a link to my packages. Have a look. Oh, I love that. That's such a great way to say that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I've had, I just, yeah, I've had that conversation with several people with clients, but also myself, I've had to say it. So it's, it's just, a, it's, yeah, it's a completely natural thing. And sometimes people um, are not even aware. They're like, oh gosh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they're, they're not thinking about it. So it's your right. job to be aware of when your boundaries are being approached and how you want to handle that. Yeah. And I think that's a really good point because I think people are looking to you for guidance obviously, because they want to book coffee with you or they want to, you know, ask you these questions. So they're already looking at you as an expert who can help them. Mm -hmm. And what I always say is, if I can help you with you just reading my blog posts, great, mm -hmm. you know, more power to go, go for it. But there are people who really need to be in a group class. There are people who really yes. need to work one-on-one. -on -one. And when you say, you know, this is actually the kind of stuff people hire me for, that helps them realize, oh, okay, well, this is a very specific question that I'm going to need to work through. And I'm going to need to decide, you know, is this how I want to invest my business development dollars, you know, here and now, or is this something that I can you know, figure out later or whatever. And, and it's sort of, it's, uh, again, you acting as the expert and guiding them through this process so that they can make informed decisions. Absolutely. And that's also generous. It's an active service. It is an active yeah. service to be clear with people, um, about that and to be clear yourself about what you, how you work and how, you know, how you can best serve them. So, and, and like you said, it Doesn't Renee Brown say that Clar clarity is kindness. Isn't that her thing? Clear is kind. Yeah. Clear I, is remember kind. That, I remember that quote. It's a big, in, in her book, big, big text. Clear is oh. kind. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we've talked about your vision. We've talked about how you serve that vision. Now, what I want to know, because I don't think we've ever had this conversation is what keeps you motivated? So what do you do? I don't know. Well, maybe I should ask the question first, Stephanie. Like, do you ever get bummed out or like freaked <laughs> out? Or I mean, you're so positive. Do you ever like, because you know that entrepreneurial roller coaster can be no joke. What do you do <laughs> when you're on the, you're trying yeah. to get up that hill? Like, yeah. you know, how do you stay motivated? Yeah. Um, that's a great question. I, I am for the most part a very positive person. And so I'm really up high most of the time. But when I do have a down, then it is pretty down, but it doesn't last for long. So um, I think the more um, challenging piece comes not so much when you're really, really down, because mm. uh, for me, I come out of that pretty quick. It's mm. more just really staying consistent. And consistency is such mm. an important part of being a business owner. Um, and how do I do that? I, I think part of it is, I just talked about this with an interview I did with someone about process versus outcome goals. Yeah. Uh, focusing on just the, you know, the consistency and the steps of it more than the giant, da -da, you finally did it kind of thing. I think that's yeah. where a lot of people can crash and get down into the valley because they're so focused on that. So that's one thing that helps me stay, you know, pretty chucking along pretty good because mm -hmm. I'm focusing on the process goals. If I get to that place where I'm just like, why am I doing this? No one's reading my blogs. What's happening? Um, I go back to the why. Why am I doing this? Mm. Um, the whole Simon Sinek thing. And I'm doing it again. So, you know, people can make a living doing the work they love. Yeah. And, you know, every once in a while, someone will reply to my newsletter and say, I really love this, or someone will send a message and then you're like, okay, it's all worth it, you know, because sometimes you do feel like you're shouting out to the void and right. like, is anybody out there, out there? Yeah. <laughs> and so I think the key is, again, it's just stay connected to your why and try to focus more on small steps instead of giant wins and 
really understand I'm, I'm just beating this drum all the time but consistency really does make a difference i agree so mm -hmm. hang in there and write that next blog post make that next video go to that next networking meeting follow up it's never too late to follow up by the way mm. <laughs> and yeah that, so that's that's how i stay motivated is is the the work the difference you can make really it's the mean it's the whole meaningful piece for me back to why i even started this i want to yeah. do work that matters i want to do meaningful work with meaningful outcomes with people that are also doing meaningful work mm, so good so process oriented uh versus outcome versus outcomes so it's interesting because i was just i was thinking about I showed this um, on a little Instagram video I did this morning, but I want to show this to you. Okay. Um, this is my project plan for my wow. summit. And I don't know if you can see this, but it's shaped like a comet. Yeah. It's, and so it's they're nice. all it's like week by week by week. And then, you know, this is the goal. Yeah. But the goal is way over here. And it's yeah. like all of this, you know, so I stay focused. Mm. on the thing I need to do now, mm. you know, and then once I got here, I was like, oh, well, everything's done. Oh, yeah. And no, here I, we are. I, that's a great point that you just brought up. I want to just jump in on that. The, the whole now, like this is <laughs> staying in the moment. Life happens in the present moment. So mm -hmm. stop dwelling on the past and anything that didn't work or any stress you had and don't stress about the future, what's going to happen. Just in this moment, be in the moment, enjoy this moment, mm. and because life, this is where it happens for everything. Yes. Ah, oh, so much goodness today. <laughs> All right. Well, um, speaking of the moment, we do have some people live on the call, so I'm going to switch to questions in a minute. But before we go there, I want to make sure that everyone knows how to get in touch with you. And uh, I know you also have something you're offering today. So do you want to talk a little bit about that, where people can find you and yes. um, how to follow up with you, that awesome report that I mentioned earlier? Yes. So if you go to fireflycoaching.com, um, you can get my free report, Seven Steps to Attract More Clients in Less Time. On Instagram, I'm Firefly Coaching. On Facebook, I'm Firefly Coaching. On LinkedIn, I'm Stephanie Ward. Um, we can connect anywhere that you'd like. If you have questions, my email's on my website. And that's about it. Yeah. And I have to say, uh, for anyone who, uh, even for those of us, because uh, I, I mean, I actually really enjoy marketing. But um, yeah, you do. You're good at it. I too. do. Thank you. Um, but I love receiving your newsletter. It's always full of fresh and new ideas, great tools, technology. And even though a lot of it is maybe something that I'm already doing, it just reminds me, it's like a good prompt. You know, you keep me on my game. Oh, thanks. That's good to know, really. Well, thanks for that. <laughs> and I think I'm one of those people who's responding to you all the time, like, thank you. <laughs> you are, you are. <laughs> I appreciate and it. I gotta say, peeps, like, it, make sure that you do that, right? Because. I know for me, it makes a big difference when people respond to my newsletter or post up in the comments or heart it, you know, even though you're saying we don't need that external or we shouldn't need that external validation, it really is nice to hear it once in a while. It's pretty, look, it's, you can appreciate it 100%. Just don't um, base your whole value on it. So it's yes. it's nice to, to have for sure because you know, then you're, you're it's a way to measure your work and to know yeah. it's worth continuing. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you did get some kind of comment that was negative, uh, I'm not saying ignore everyone. I'm just saying you can listen, but not internalize it. Yeah. So if you said, you know, I can't read your font because it's too small. Okay. I can make my font bigger. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and, you know, Oh my God, you know, she hates me and I'm <laughs> destroyed. And, you know, so, I mean, that's just maybe not a great example, but yeah, you can listen, but just, make sure you're, the majority of your foundation is based on an internal knowing. Yeah. And I also, I think I want to bring up something that I've heard you talk about before, which is to sort of assume the best of people right. and assume that they're coming at you trying to be helpful 
and you know engaging with you like you said if someone books you for coffee and asks you a question assume they're coming from a good place you know of curiosity and respecting your opinion mm -hmm. and and then you can sort of engage with them like thanks so much for the feedback or that was a great catch or you know because we are human and we do make mistakes and sometimes the font is really hard to read yeah that's especially when you get older so <laughs> yeah yeah True. all right so um i just want to open it up for questions let's see how i do this uh, I know we've got some attendees on the line and I'm going to say welcome everyone and if you have any questions feel free to um, put them in the chat box. Um, while we're waiting for these to come in, Stephanie, um, I'm curious if you have questions that people often ask you that you want to kind of tell us a little bit about. Um, I, I think I've asked most of mine. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I've got um, one thing I want to just add really quick onto that last bit about mm -hmm. um, assuming the best. You can also assume the best, for example, um, when you haven't heard back from a client, a prospective mm -hmm. client. And this is another of the four agreements, which is don't make assumptions. So, it, yeah. and if you have to, if you absolutely have to make an assumption, assume the best. So I had this client call with someone. I didn't hear back. She said she would call back. Oh, she hates me. My service is horrible. She doesn't want to work with me. That's making assumptions. So don't do that. But if you feel compelled to close the story or make up a story, which we do as humans, say she's really busy. She went on a vacation. Mm -hmm. She sent me an email and went to spam, whatever. But that it, you make a nice story out of it. Yeah. I, I had to say that was one of my biggest learnings when I first started out in business. This um, idea of not taking things personally um, so one of the things that, um, my coach had me do was walk around and say, um, oops, I made a mistake. Oops, I made a mistake. <laughs> and like, just get used to the idea that I'm human and I make mistakes. And then to really ask questions about those stories I was making up mm -hmm. to see if they were true. Okay. So we've got some, uh, comments coming in. Uh, that was very helpful from Sarah. So thank you, Sarah. Um, Aaron says, I live by that philosophy. Once I heard it from Brene Brown, I really live by it because it helps me treat people with so much more grace. Mm, love the word grace. Yes. Does. Yes. Does. And uh, Sarah said, love the 15 minute rule. Um, so mm. Uh, if anyone else has any questions, we can also do some uh, live coaching here with Stephanie if you have any marketing questions about your business. Um, and to, to follow up on that, so I have a question for you. Okay. Um, as we're talking about follow up with clients, mm. you always talk about marketing in a way that's not creepy. Yes. So do you have a rule for like how many times you follow up with someone? Three. Yeah, and do, I do. <laughs> okay. And do you like require yourself to follow up with them by phone, by email, by some other way, or do you like do three emails or how do you? Yeah. Just this is such a great that. question because I have a formula that I work, use that works for me for this. So uh, three times and you can choose if you want to do one or two. Um, the key is what I found, and this happens a lot, a lot more than you think. People, technology is great and technology is a nightmare. So yeah. emails go to spam, voice messages get deleted. Um, things just happen. I've had so many times with like, I didn't get it. Or what are you talking about? I didn't. Yeah. So what I do is whatever channel you start with, which might usually is email, don't use email, then switch channels, use LinkedIn messenger mm -hmm. or WhatsApp or a text message or in, uh, Instagram direct message. So change the platform and say, Hey, I sent you an email. Did you get it? Cause sometimes they literally did not get it. And if they did get it, they could go, oh yeah, I did this. I just haven't had time. So and do you remember that happened with us, Stephanie, where yes. you were emailing me yes. and it went into some crazy black hole. Yes. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't get your email. Yes. Like, it totally happened. Yes, it really um, has happened. Yeah. And Sarah just says, I just had that happen. I followed up with a person yes. on Instagram because the person didn't see my email. Yes, it happens all the time. So that's one way you just gotta switch channels every time. And then what I like to do in the last effort, which the third one isn't really, it's, it's an action, but what I say is to the person, 
um, we talked about working together or whatever it was. Um, I haven't heard back, which is no problem. I just want to let you know, I'm going to let put the ball in your court. So I'm here mm -hmm. if you want to talk, but then it's rounded off. It's finished up. It's closed. It's not something out there dangling. Cause I don't like to leave people hanging and I, I like to, you know, stay on top of things. And that way it's finished yeah. business and then they're free. I'm free. And if they want to come back, it's fine. But then I move on and it just yeah. feels better. Yeah. I love that. That's such a great approach. And Sarah says, by the way, she booked that person that she followed up with hey, on yeah. Instagram. So, yeah. No, okay, Erin has a question. Yeah. My question would be, I'm trying to include deaf women that are local and utilize their feedback in order to be an advocate and become an expert in educating people in the online industry about being more accessible. And by the way, I'll be talking to Erin later on the summit. So um, we can talk more about that. I'd like to ensure that this is collaborative. How would you suggest I go about building this focus group to be able to come back to my online community with feedback and valuable information? Oh, such a good question. And the question was, how can you be inclusive or how can you? So that? what she wants to do yeah. is build a focus group and yeah. she'd like your advice on how to do that so that she can go back to her online community and say, I've gotten feedback, you know, here's the, on my approach and here's some valuable information. And so you're looking on how to approach people to get them into the focus group? Is that your question on, or do you already have the people? Yes. That, okay, okay. So, um, well, let's see. And you said they are hearing impaired? Yes. Okay, so then it would be a text message or a video with captions. I would um, tell your story in a way that shows them Oh, she says, use the word deaf, not hearing impaired. Okay. okay. Excellent. Thank you for that. So I would tell the story in a way that shows them that you are trying to, in a position to advocate for them and you need their assistance to do that and mm -hmm. explain the mission and the vision, why you're even doing this and invite them in, in, in a letter form. I personally prefer snail mail, if at all possible, if you have their post addresses, because people are, well, first of all, sending an email actually technically could be spam. And snail mail is just much more personal. And so if you have the list of people and you can get their post address, I would go that route. That's and lovely. I, I, I love having received many notes from you. <laughs> it is really nice. Um, and just, Erin, to give you feedback on kind of how I put together this summit, um, I actually did, I used email, and I, uh, I sent an invitation to everyone, um, as you know, because you got one, uh, to invite them in. And not everyone said yes. You know, not everyone could do it. Not everyone was feeling it. Um, but, um, but, you know, the people who did say yes, then they're in the group. And then I created a group on LinkedIn. Um, to sort of centralize all the communication for everyone in the summit. So I can just add something too. You can also, mm -hmm. if you um, have the uh, something valuable that you can give these people, offer to you know offer them something in return. So if you would be part of this focus group for me, I would like to in return do this for you. Yeah, if you're interested, and I'm not sure what that would be for you, but there's usually always something that you could offer, and it's it's just to show that you do appreciate because it's going to be take their time and energy and that it's a reciprocal in some way. Yeah, actually, that's a really great point. I do this with select former clients. I have a very small focus group and what I offer them in return is um, ongoing, you know, quest style questions answered. There you go. So, you know, I'll do a shout out to two of them in the group and say, do you have anything that's been coming up or do you have any events? Do you want any feedback? And of course, it's not a full, you know, event styling session, but it's just quick. And because I know them and worked with them before, it's easy for me to do that. And I enjoy it. So okay. it's a win-win for both of us. So Mary Jane says, Allison and Stephanie, thank you both for such an energetic and interesting <laughs> session. Big hugs to you both. Big hugs to you, Mary Jane. Oh, um, and Aaron says, I think my main worry is people worry about confidentiality. Mm. That is such a good point about being able to reciprocate. 
Right. So if that's if that's an issue, then find a way to do something that's that done privately. Yeah. And always just ask about permission along the way and how um, how much they're comfortable sharing. There's usually always a way to do something um, with respecting people's privacy. I'm a huge I'm huge on privacy and, and integrity. So uh, app, always get permission and find a way to do something quietly if needed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely agree with that. And of course, technology helps us to connect, but it often has real issues with privacy. So I think it's very good, Erin, um, to have that question top of mind and to make sure you put it out there that you are respecting their privacy and you know you can do these things anonymously. You're not gonna, um, you could even create a contract if you wanted to. Um, and this is something I do with my clients. I tell them, you know, I may talk about our work together, but I'm not going to use your name unless I've specifically asked you, you know, um, and I think it's really important to respect those boundaries. Uh, just one last call for any other questions on marketing for Stephanie. She's such an amazing resource for us. So I love the live coaching for you, Erin. I hope that helped. And if anyone else has any other questions, ooh, it's 11.11 in my time zone. So kiss the clock. Kiss the clock. Uh, hoping for lots of success. Oh, I forgot I have a touch screen. That means I can't see the chat. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, so for those of you who um, have not bought a ticket, if you want, you can buy a ticket to the virtual summit and then you'll get all of the speakers uh, free offers in one easy to access email. That's my bunny behind making all that noise. So sorry about that. Um, she decided to just ravage her toys in her pen. Um, anything else you want to tell us, Stephanie, before we sign off? Um, I would like to just add uh, one piece that's come up a lot lately is we can't work with you if we don't know what you offer. Mm -hmm. And so my, my request and challenge to you all is to make sure that you are sharing your offers, your offers are visible and clear on your website, and that you're actually telling people about your offers. Because we all think everyone knows what we do, but they really, really don't. And so if you hear someone talking about something and you know you could help them, you can just hop in very, you know, again, in a human way and say, you know, I don't know if you know this, but I actually, that's the work I do. Yes. And so make sure your offers are being shared, whether it's by you, your website or referral partners, but don't be shy about making an offer. It's just like saying, I have this pair of glasses. Do you, do you, would you need some help with seeing? No. Okay. That's right. not, it's not, you're not pushing it. You're not like, buy these, get them now they're hot. No. <laughs> you know? So it's just make the offer and yes or no is perfect. Yeah, that's an excellent point. It's like if someone sneezes, do you hesitate to offer them a tissue? No. You know? Good example. I love that. I'm going to use that. <laughs> All right, lady. It has been such a pleasure to chat with you. Thanks to everyone for joining. Um, I, uh, I would love to... Um, have you follow up with Stephanie on Firefly.com. Get her great report on how to attract clients. It's super awesome. Get on her newsletter. It's super awesome. I just can't say enough wonderful things about Stephanie. So it's FireflyCoaching.com. Just quick. Oh, sorry. No worries. No worries. Firefly was that TV show. I think so. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so fireflycoaching.com. All right, lady, thank you so much for thank being you. here. Thank it you. is so good to see your beautiful you face. You too. We miss you over here. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I miss you all too. Um, and, um, and I'm so excited for the rest of the summit. So the next speaker that I have up is Rachel Wynn. Uh, check in on the schedule to see... Uh, when I'll be speaking with her later today and then Jill James at the end of the day. So some super awesome content coming up. I can't wait. And thanks for being here, Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for your questions. All right. Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye. -bye.